The last major piece to disassemble on the mill is the table itself. I don't strictly need to take it off, but I wanted to to make it easier to clean. Uh, to get the table off, uh, you need to take off the power feed first, and then the handle on the x-axis, and finally the, the lead screw. Get everything off. I've had a lot of questions about this particular power feed, since it is an aftermarket, I think Harbor Freight power feed, that was adapted to the mill. So you can see some of it here, and I'll have some video and photos later with more in depth about the various adapter pieces that someone made for it. All right, so the situation is this bevel gear is stuck. It's stuck on there pretty good, but it looks like it's, you know, it's brass or something relatively soft. So I don't want to go at it with, for example, a gear puller, which would probably work really nicely. But I think that would, it would have to sit right on the gear teeth and would probably be not so great for the teeth. So that's probably softer than this gear puller. So I've got these rigger blocks that I used actually to move this mill. And this is a, well, it's probably Southern yellow pine, not as soft as like a nice white wood, but it should be softer than this gear, so I'm going to gently tap it in and wedge it and then rotate so that we don't wedge it too out of line. Give it, oh yeah, it's moving just barely. like any of the teeth are damaged. Perfect. Behind the bevel gear were another set of screws holding the power feed unit itself onto the adapter plate. Once those are removed, then you can pull off the adapter plate and then finally the adapter tray that goes onto the, the end of the, the table. After that, it was basically just struggling to get the table itself off. It's really easy to disassemble once you know the order of operations, but I didn't at the time and was incorrectly trying to pull it off the wrong way. Uh, the key is to first take off the power feed like I did, then take off the other x-axis wheel, and then once that's disassembled, then you can pull off the, the table itself. I was thinking you just needed one side to be fully disassembled to slide it off, but you actually need both because the, the lead screw gets caught. And here I thought I could take the lead screw off by removing the, um, the crossfeed nut. But that was completely incorrect. The crossfeed nut just stays right where it is. It needs to come out this direction, not that direction. Otherwise, just a matter of slowly unscrewing it. And this will slide out. And I think that's about all I'm going to take apart. I don't really think the knee needs to come apart. And really, this didn't need to come apart at all. It just was going to make cleaning the table a lot easier and getting to the rest of the table quite a bit easier, too, for just general cleaning and stripping and repainting. So I think I'm about done tearing stuff apart. I'm going to clean the bottom of the mill table now and this stuff down here mostly just going to you know scrub off some of the grease and clean it up a little bit don't particularly care uh, this part I'll be a little more aggressive on uh, because this isn't actually the machine surface so this I'm not too worried about the the dovetail itself though uh, I'm going to be really gentle with this and just take some paper towels and degreaser to it I don't really want to to scratch up those dovetails. They look like they're in really nice condition. I'll bring you in for a close-up. 
All right, here's the top of the dovetail, as you can see. And it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's smooth, there's really no nicks or burrs. I don't see any swerf that's been ground into it. Uh, so I'm just gonna be really gentle with that and give it a nice light cleaning. And the underside, I mean, all this down here is pretty grimy. It's just, you know, caked on grease. But I mean, none of it's structurally a problem and this doesn't contribute anything. You won't even get to see it. So I'm just gonna clean it up, degrease it, and not really care too much about de-rusting it. This is too big for any bucket that I have, and I only have a gallon of the evapor rust. So my plan is really just to lay wet paper towel over the whole thing and let it de-rust that way, which would make this relatively difficult to de-rust. These are the paper towels that I mentioned, which have been soaked in a pepper rust, and I'm just laying on top of the, the mill table surface. I'll place a, a soaked rag on top of this as well to give it a little extra reservoir of evapor rust, and then wrap the whole thing in saran wrap and leave it overnight. Oh no. Uh, that sucks. I probably should have seen this coming. It does say in the directions, don't leave any air bubbles or wrinkles, uh, but I didn't. Luckily, the imperfections are mostly just on the surface. There's not really any depth to them. So this is really isn't a big deal. It's just kind of cosmetic. And I, I don't know, looks kind of neat. It's like marbled cast iron. I did go ahead and use a paper towel soaked in evaporust just to give a, a quick scrub to these surface imperfections and then go over it with a, a razor very gently just to scrape off a little bit of the kind of like surface burr that the imperfections left. And this actually seemed to do a pretty good job. It cut most of the imperfections down so you can't feel it by hand anymore. They're still visible, but they come out pretty clean. The last thing to do was to give the table a quick stoning. Uh, I've never really stoned a precision surface before. I've never stoned anything really outside sharpening chisels. So I was pretty nervous about destroying the surface here. Uh, so I was relatively cautious and just did really light strokes. I lingered on burrs that were obvious, but otherwise tried to keep it to a minimum. Now I'm not going to bore you with all the footage of cleaning scraping and generally removing the paint from the mill body itself. There are hours and hours of footage. Uh, suffice to say it was a lot of work and it was not a whole lot of fun and it took several nights to actually get finished. But what is really nice to look at is the final result before the citrus strip is actually pulled off. There's this really, really great textured surface, which is just, I don't know, it's really pleasing to look at. And scraping it off is just so, so satisfying. It's right up there with peeling the, the plastic off new electronic screens. So I'll leave you with a minute or two of footage of scraping off this citrus strip. And here it is, all masked up. I also won't bore you with all the footage of the masking. There's a lot of little fiddly bits. 
but it's pretty much ready to paint. So I think the next episode will paint and finally start reassembling. Thanks for watching.